just about sailing, September, second one in September. Um, we're going to have a look at some holding tanks today and a little bit on some rudder work that I want to do. Um, a, a bit of an update on the through hulls that I did. I've had some further technical advice and thanks for all the feedback that everybody's kind of given on that by the way. Um, and also uh, went to the went to the Southampton boat show. Not a lot of footage from there. You can you can search YouTube for all of that sort of stuff. But it's nice to be able to talk to the technical people um, directly. And I was very keen to talk to um, tech tanks who I've known for a while. Um, nice people to talk to. They can definitely make up um, a custom tank based on what I was looking at last week. But I particularly wanted to look at holding tanks. And I've had my eye on one of these for a long time which is the Series A, the sort of vertical, hopefully you can see that tank, because I think there's a space just behind the, uh, the head that I can put that in. So I went and had a look and they had one kind of set up nicely and then I made a cardboard mock-up and let's have a look and see how well that might fit or not. Right, so it's still a bit dusty in here after doing the work for the through hulls, but so this is the head's compartment and <laughs> rather horrifically this is where the dining table is stored, but um, and maybe I'll find a better place for that, maybe I won't. So the idea is to see if there's enough room behind here where these shelves currently are to put a 40 or even 60 litre holding tank. Tech Techs do one and visited them at the boat show and took measurements and I've made a cardboard mock out. So let's, the first thing I'm going to do, let's take these shelves out and then see if um, if that's an actual possibility. Sorry, I've got a bit of glare on the lens there. Right, hopefully there's no more glare on this. I've put up the, everybody uses these, don't they? It's a sort of cut up yoga mat thing. You squidge in the window, it's <laughs> really, really good. Um, yeah, no, this is coming off very easily, actually. I was gonna film taking it off, but I literally tried once, taking one screw off, it came off, and then within half a second, all the rest are off. So let's take the rest of this off, take that pipe up, and then see if my cardboard template actually fits or not. And I haven't tried it before, so you're watching this live on YouTube. Well, not live, because it's weeks ago, or days ago. Anyway, you know what I mean. Right, so the rest of it pretty much fell off. And as you can see, I've taken the um, this stuff, which I'm going to replace in this particular section. I'm not going to replace it everywhere, but it's in really bad condition. It literally just fell off. Um, and behind here, some place there's just no varnishing at all. So this would be a good place to start to see what the varnishing looks like. And you can see I've taken that thing down. There's a few wires coming down, which are going to get rerouted further north than here. And so anyway, let's um, have a look. This is actually I'm going to put this on a tripod. Right, when I said I'm going to put this on a tripod, I wasn't talking about the holding tank, I was actually talking about the camera, I was kind of talking to myself. So, this is the um, sort of very rough cardboard cutout thing that I've made. Um, so, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to a clip of, of what I saw at the boat show, so you can see what it looks like. And I've kind of measured this, this is the smaller one and see if this fits. So let's just have a look at what we saw at the boat show. This is the 40 litre tank. Um, that on the left, that's the carbon thing to get rid of all the smells and obviously there's then something that goes from that to the outside of the boat. They've actually got a grav gravity fed discharge but you'd need a two inch um, through hole which I'm not going to do. And you probably don't need um, an anti-siphoning device because the tank itself would actually do the anti-siphoning work for you. Right, see, so as you can see, an almost exact replica. And is it going to fit? It's got lots of cables and things in the way. The pipe work is going to be. changed around. I haven't figured out the exact configuration yet. If it's this awkward getting the cardboard on it. So, let me just stand back because I, th oh, I think I was probably standing in the way there. But you can sort of hopefully see. I think that needs to be quite upright. That fits in. 
need to have some space above for all the bits and pieces. So I don't think I'm going to get the extension in. So it's like warning here, I'm about to open the... Oh, that works. So that's the 40 litre. That's the additional thing for the 20 litre. And no, that's not going to go in there. So it looks like it looks like I can actually fit. Sorry, this up now. It actually looks like I can fit a. Um, oh, there's a microwave in here before, wasn't it? it? Looks like I can fit the 40 litre in here quite nicely with the pipework coming along the side because that has got room to go down a little bit lower. I can fit battens in the back, I can get that nicely upright. That's that's actually a result there and there's little bits of spaces around it. I was hoping I might be able to get some shelving down here but I really do need to have the... Um, so at the moment, I mean I, I don't know if you can see that, it's got an anti-siphon valve on the outlet, outlet it hasn't got an anti-siphon valve on the inlet, and that's that's almost more important to be quite honest, because that's the one that's more likely to be open. Because obviously, anyway. So yeah, it's very doubtful that that's in the right place. In fact, it's most certainly not. That's our water inlet, so I'll probably blank that off, and then just have inlet. Yeah, no, that's that's good. That's the result. Maybe I could just fiberglass that and waterproof. No, no, no. I think I'll get the tech tanks one. Yeah, very happy with that. That looks good. So the other thing I meant to say is obviously that's just kind of a little slopey bit and the inspection hatch goes there. But there's no reason why I can't have an effect. I will. I'll have a piece of wood going straight across there and all the way across um, that you can kind of unscrew to get at it. So you're not going to be looking at the and I will put a level gauge in it. So you're not going to be looking at the horrible half see through contents of your holding tank. So, um, yeah, I'm very pleased with that. That's, um, that's what you get for having a fat boat. Sorry, a well-proportioned boat. Um, that you can actually fit things in the side like that. So, yeah, couldn't be more pleased with that. It's nice when something goes right, doesn't it? Or have I overlooked something? Very possibly. So that is definitely a result. Um, some of you might look at that and think, well, yeah, I'm sure you could get that extra 20 litres under there. It's not because of the height. It's actually the depth. The, the hull slopes around quite significantly. So... 40 litres is fine. In terms of the setup, there's various options that they kind of put on the website and in the brochure of different degrees of complexity. I'm probably going to go for this one, except I'm not going to have a gravity discharge. I'm going to put a pump in because uh, the way that the layout means that I would have to put another through hole and it would need to be a two inch through hole. And I, I, I'm going to just put a pump in there, so I'm going to put um, uh, sort of that onto there. That's about as simple as it can get. So anyway, that's uh, that's that bit. The other thing, um, I wanted to have a look at um, my rudder. Some of the bushes need sort of replacing and so on. And there's a bit right down at the bottom of the, right at the bottom of the rudder stock uh, with some big screws. And it, and it almost looked like one was, was missing because it was so heavily sort of anti-fouled. So I wasn't intending to take the rudder off at the beginning um, but I wanted to sort of have a look at it and sort of suss out what I would actually need to do so the first thing I did is I scraped the anti-foul off of this 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 boot at the bottom um, and then had a bit of a clean-up with a wire brush and let's have a look and see what happens next so I'd literally just taken the cotter pin out of here and then I thought I'm going to clean this off and I got the wire brush to it and this literally just just dropped off um, which is not particularly good, is it? So, <laughs> and it was literally just brushing it with a wire brush like that. So, um, I don't think my rudder would have fallen off because I think it's kind of resting on here. Whereas you can see, I've cleaned this up nicely. These all turn, by the way. So, I think I will actually take the rudder off today um, and see what see what other horrors lay in store for me. Deary, deary me. So these these screws actually came off quite easily and I'm kind of a little bit paranoid that the whole thing's going to come crashing to the ground as soon as this this comes off. So um, 
yeah, I was very surprised that these these came out and they were actually in very good condition. Um, I'm obviously not going to show me just unscrewing all full screws. So um, there we go. There's the last one, and the rudder should just lever out and drop down at this point. <laughs> of course it doesn't. So what I do is I've actually put one of the screws back in so it doesn't fall and there's quite a bit of some sort of sealant or caulking um, in this bit which I prise out and it's like a sort of black rubbery stuff which is the same as I found on the keel joint. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's Sikaflex or Butyl or whatever but I'll kind of save that anyway. And take the final screw out and quick wriggle around, still not moving, so tool of choice. And using a screw, uh, by this time I've just lost all safety, <laughs> I'm not thinking it's going to kind of plummet to the ground, so I'm just going to try and tap this, although of course it could suddenly become free and then just sort of plummet to the ground. And here we go, I've kind of popped the rudder up with my knee and then just tapping that down and it started to move quite nicely. And there we go. So, time to lower the rudder and take it off. And, oh, it's hit the ground, so what to do about this. By the way, nice bit of repurposing of that um, telephone box out there. That's actually our, um, where our electricity comes from. There's some electricity cable things in there. So right, okay, as you can see the rudder stock is still well up into the boat and there's a tube up there and <laughs> I just looked at it from every angle and then you kind of, you get to that point where you just realise this is not going to happen. That sort of look of, yeah. Right, so a big hunky piece of casting that is. So I've got no choice. I didn't, I, I'm going to have to dig a hole there. So I'm not quite sure how deep it's going to be, but I can work that out. So I need to dig a hole, lower that down and then I can start to sort of do all the bits of refurbishment that I want to do on the rudder. So that was a bit of a shame, wasn't it? But to be quite honest, I, a little bit of maths, I could have figured that out and I didn't have a spade with me. Um, and I'm not the only one who's fallen into that trap talking to a few people in the boatyard. So I need to um, grab a spade, dig that out, take take that out and, um, and then start to do a little bit of work on the rudder. It doesn't need a huge amount. Just a quick revisit now because I... Um, I visited uh, West Systems, or it was either Epoxy Craft or Epoxy, uh, whatever they, I can't remember what they're called, but um, very useful people. I like West Systems products a lot, and I find them very, very easy to use. Um, and one of the things that they said, because I asked about after you put the 407 uh, filler in, which has got the like, little ping pong balls, they recommend that you actually then put... Uh, three, four, five, six coats of, of clear epoxy hardener mix over the top, which I hadn't done. I, I'd just done the one with the white, um, the white pigment in. So I actually sanded it back down and then put the extra coats on, um, you know, leaving about sort of an hour, an hour and a half between each one. And I thought I'd try their brushes because they do an awful lot of, um, you know, different sort of products and things that you can get. And they do a... They do a high quality finishing brush, but I didn't need that, so I was obviously just putting on some stuff. 818 laminating brush, good quality firm bristle brush for applying epoxy over the laminating area and for consolidating the fabric available in 50mm width. So let's have a go with their um, the proper West System brush and see how that looks. So here we go, the advice is, and I re-sanded this down to actually um, put several coats, up to six, of epoxy resin mix and I love West System products 
and they're great and I decided to use the West System brush. Unfortunately they've got this habit and you can see just at the top there if they shed hairs. Um, I'd heard that the way of getting around this was to sort of clamp them up with a pair of mole grips and then their hairs wouldn't fall out. Um, and it is a real pain because you literally, I mean I've dug this out with a knife and then you have to kind of re-go over it uh, and then do the tipping again. And literally as soon as I did this and started, I put another coat on and started tipping and bang, another hair falls out. So to be quite honest, West System brush is rubbish, just unfit for purpose. And I did this and the other side and the other hole and I think about six or seven hairs fell out altogether. So, you know, excellent products except for this brush which is totally and absolutely useless. Yeah, so I don't know about you but I absolutely hate it when um, a product has one job to do and it does it really badly. So all of the rest of, of the West System products and tools and things, fantastic, absolutely brilliant, but please, please take that brush off the market. It is rubbish, even when you squidge it down with a one job to do, can't do it anyway. Right, so um, last little clip before we finish from the boat show. Uh, you sometimes get these little stands with these products that are vaguely to do with sailing and they're a little bit quirky and they're a little bit interesting and you kind of don't see them anywhere else I can't to know but there was one that um, that kind of that, 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 that stood out and I thought I just without any comment I will show that clip but before I do that just a little bit of interesting maritime history um, you saw me sail past Deal uh, earlier on in the year when I was going from Dover to Ramsgate and Deal's got one of these towers with a time ball on it and that's a sort of ball that's on the top of a post and you could see it from, from out at sea and it drops at exactly uh, 1300 uh, GMT or UT whatever it's called now um, so you could you could sort of set your, your tidal calculations and all the rest of it so if you're on a ship um, and the captain you're doing something the captain shouts down to you balls up it, that can be one of two things, either that it's not one o'clock or that you've made a bit of a hash of a particular job. So totally unrelated to that and totally without comment, let's just have a look at what this guy was um, selling at the boat show. And I do, I do the demographics for this channel, by the way, um, all around the world, there is a mixture of male and female viewers. So I try and keep things sort of uh, gender neutral, but it's a bit difficult to with this one. Team. So do, do you understand why? Hang on, let me take... Go on, give me a sales pitch. Okay, so basically in every pair there's this ballpark pouch um, and that has a light mesh oh, right. hammock and all that does is separate the skin. So your balls are never touching right. your leg. Um, you're never going to get any skin irritation, you're never going to stick it, you're never going to stick it. Um, no um, the guy who invented it was a fisherman and he was standing there in his waders just constantly. <laughs> Yeah, but you've got to fiddle with it, haven't you? <laughs> some, some men enjoy it, so they're not going to buy these, but <laughs> some men don't. Um, and then we do, we do like a kind of semi lycra uh, sports compression one, and that's quite triathlon, which is where they're on the wetsuit, sailing, to keep everything away. <laughs> So, yeah. so no comment on that, but I thought it was worth putting in. Uh, there isn't a website, and I'm certainly not going to Google it because I don't want that coming up in my uh, search history. But anyway, big success on the holding tank. That will save me a lot of hassle. And let's see if we can get the rudder off next time. Cheers. See you then. Bye.